Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Colum Kill. Our gathering song. is number 180, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, number 180. Let us gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created with which we will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by this grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, every soul, even soul, should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended with all, from all the ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord.
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. And let us give glory to God. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With the great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favors were accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
let the house of Aaron say his mercy and choice forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his mercy and choice forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior, the joyful shout of victory. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. 
On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the Jews, disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Dismas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, everybody knows that Christmas is more important than Easter. That was a comment by a well-educated uh, parishioner who she looked at me and she said, oh yeah, you know what I mean. But I, I think the seasons and this led to a conversation this last week about Easter. And is Lent more important than Easter season? And the guy's response back was, I didn't know we had an Easter season. We celebrate Lent for 40 days. We celebrate Easter for 50 days. Is that a big deal? Maybe not, right? I would argue that it is. I, I think it's particularly important today, and I think we've lost it a little bit, and I just like to elevate it, what this season is supposed to be about. This season of, of, is supposed to lay out before us a resurrected life and what that looks like. That the data of Jesus' resurrected life is all we really have to go on. And we look at it, we think about it, and, and the church invites us to ponder on it. It is surprising to me that the church does not start with um, St. Paul. St. Paul wrote theologically about the resurrection constantly. But they start with just really three examples rather than an argument. The first argument, or the first example, is the, um, the Acts of the Apostles. That a community lives together and no one is in need. They put everything before the apostles. 
You have to love really deeply for that to happen. Something big has to change in your life for you to do that. It's kind of stunning. The heart moved by love. The second one is from the first letter of John. Take that and look at it and try to read that and make any sense out of it. It's a tough one. But it's, it is trying to get to this point where we become or unite ourselves with Jesus. Well, become, really, is what it's trying to say. We are, we are children of God just like Jesus. That the resurrection that he talks about is for us too. And then the gospel today is some of that data of a resurrected life rather than just, he didn't come back from the dead. He passed through these doors, locked doors, without any any problem. There's something going on here. He comes and says, peace be with you. Okay, nice concept. But here is the thing that seems to be elevated in this gospel today three times over. He comes, says to them, peace be with you. And then he says to them, look at my hands and my side. Okay. Then again, Thomas comes in a second time and he says, Unless I stick my finger in his hands and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And then the third time, Jesus comes back on the second visit and says to Thomas, here I am. Stick your finger in my hands and stick your hand in my side. Nothing is repeated in Scripture three times over, without it having some meaning. What is going on there? Some wounds in this life have meaning to them. Some parts of our existence here on earth, even wounds, carry with us into the resurrected life. We don't just disappear into an ether. Those sacrificial wounds were still present in his resurrected life. And those wounds gave more meaning to his life as both the Son of God and as a man. What happens here matters there. What we do here is really, in a lot of ways, practicing for there. Is anybody really excited about the idea that this here on earth is just practice for heaven? We want more. We want more meaning than that, right? But I was struck by something that happened last night. Father Tom is doing a day of recollection with the seminarians. Put a schedule out, and we have normally have a holy hour at about 9 o'clock on Friday night, and then go in grand silence. Tom, Father Tom changed the schedule, and he said at 8.30, Iowa women's basketball game. So we watched the game last night. But I was just thinking about that for a moment. She, Caitlin Clark, will play 38 games. Uh, about two weeks worth of basketball. That's it. A whole year. Could have been fit into two weeks, right? And how much practice she did for those 80 hours. Would anybody say it's worth it? Yeah. Yeah. 
what we, what we find out is this movement within ourselves that where we discover ourselves, we are surprised by what we can do. I thought it was interesting even listening to Lisa Bluter's uh, comment afterwards, how she's seen Caitlin grow over four years, how much different she is from when she started. This is what this faith is about, is to be surprised by it. We discover hope when we thought we had no hope. Oh my gosh, how could this be? And we go back and just look at the things that we do just at Mass. We turn to one another and say, peace be with you. We are taking on Jesus' words. How often do we say, peace be with you, any place else in this world? In the doctor's office, in, in your own marriage, you know, where, where do you say that? In the lawyer's office? Do you start with peace be with you in your morning? No, I don't, I'm guessing not. Maybe you should, right? Well, but that practice of saying peace be with you, you are taking on Jesus' words, they're becoming your own, and they'll change us from within. This season of Lent for 50 days are given, we're just going to be given the data of the resurrection. And it's kind of like standing at Mass. You've got to put your hands up and you you're surrender to it and say, is it meaningful or not? This data becomes a powerful change within our lives. And we expect it that the resurrection, that we're made for this, we will experience it and will be surprised by it. That's why this season is so very, very important. During this Easter season, we will be proclaiming the Apostles' Creed, which reflects specifically on the resurrection of the body, our bodily resurrection. So it's on page 10 if you'd like to look upon it. I believe in one God, Oops. Father Your Almighty, own. creator Neither of heaven, heaven and earth, earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have not seen, but we still believe. With confident faith, we bring our concerns before the Lord. Please respond, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that through her preaching and works of mercy, we may continue to testify to the Lord's resurrection, we pray. Risen Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For no nations at war and people divided, that they may obtain the peace which comes from the true reconciliation, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek an increase of faith, may they grow in certainty that God's divine mercy is abundant beyond human imagination, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have trouble believing in the Lord's resurrection, 
that they may be given the gift of faith, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who receive the Easter sacraments this weekend, and for those receiving communion for the first time this weekend, may they continue to grow in a deeper relationship with Christ through the support of our parish family, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Stephen Riverbed Food Bank, the recipient of our loose coin collection, may they share the Lord's mercy with those they serve, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Daryl Enster, who died this past week, and for all who have died, that they may share in the life of the risen Lord, especially Susan Miller, Guy Gard Jr., Anna and Joseph Dunn and family, Bernadette and Julian Strum and family, Don Oliver Sr., Don Oliver Jr., Brian Oliver, Hugh and Agnes Strong, Sandra Henney, and Ann Aslan, who we remember at this Mass, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, may your risen Son be for us a precious gift dwelling in our hearts, calling us to embrace deeper faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 570, Alleluia number one, number 570. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name. Pray, good and good and all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, 
that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to love yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columkill and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind mittens to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 355 in the breaking of the bread, number 355.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple announcements here. Keep in mind to pray for those who are tomorrow uh, and uh, next Sunday who will be making their first communion. Just keep the families in, their, in our prayers, please. And at um, this Sunday at 2.30, uh, St. Uh, Raphael Cathedral is hosting an On You Stay Ministry Musicians, a program featuring inspiring music, readings, and meditations on the God's gift of grace. All are welcome. And then children's bulletins. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and proclaim the gospel with your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please join in singing number 692. I know that my Redeemer lives, number 692. Shall be remade like God. My home shall be. 